Okay, so <clears throat> we're gonna look at filling station now. And she creates a really strong um, sense of place for us here. There's a really um, clear sense of setting. The oil soaked, um, oil permeated filling station is dirty. Um, <clears throat> and it's a colloquial narrative story where she talks us through arriving at the filling station and what she sees but despite the obvious grime there's a sense of domesticity here that the it's a family filling station and the fact that that's in parentheses is interesting too that it's in brackets um do they live in the station so that contrast between the grime and the dirt and the black translucency against all those images that we associate with home and coziness like what she showed us in Sestina, um, the stove, um, the tea, the grandmother, all of those things that we kind of associate with home and comfort and security. We're presented with different images here. There's a sofa, a dirty dog that's quite comfy. Um, so Bishop is able to look past the grime and the dirt and the grease of the filling station and see um, the sense of home there. So an, it's an allegorical account of family and it furthers Bishop's idea of the uncertainty of home and what that means and what family means. Because she starts to notice other elements then too. The hirsute begonia, the doily, the tabaret, the comic books, all of these things that are um, an attempt to cover up the ugliness or to hide it or to even just balance it out a little bit. And then the questions start. Why the extraneous plant? Why the tabaret? Why or oh, why the doily? Um, and she even goes into detail about the embroidery of it. Someone has done this. Someone has embroidered the doily. Somebody waters the plant or oils it, maybe. Somebody arranges the rows of cans. Somebody loves us all. And there's a real sense of epiphany here or a real... Um, positive insight which is kind of a contrast to some of the other work that we've seen from her so there is the sense of the mother's presence even if it's unseen there are there is evidence of it here the neatness and care is indicative of the mother the I, feminizing of this family filling station that has been um that is oily and greasy and gray and grim and dark and all of those things and it's dirty but somewhere behind it all, there is this feminizing of it, the mother's presence and a sense that motherness is embroidered into the fabric of life or femininity or um, maternal instinct that has been embroidered into this fabric of life um, and is often unseen, often unappreciated. But when you look far enough into it or when you look deep enough into it, that it's there. So... Um, the filling station is certainly a more positive approach. I'm going to focus just briefly on the last line, somebody loves us all. So the idea of the language there, somebody loves us all. So that we are loved, everyone is loved in some way, whether it's a physical or whether it's a spiritual love, whether it's um, maternal, paternal, romantic, but there is this sense that everyone is loved by somebody whether um and that's important for bishop so it's written more towards the end of her life and it shows the ultimate process of thought from the days of sestina first death in nova scotia question of travel the armadillo where she really struggles to identify the sense of home and what that means she now has sort of come to terms with it this idea of somebody loves us all um, and the next poem we'll look at the fish shows this epiphany rainbow, rainbow, rainbow moment that she has.